Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Jared Grebner Show. This is Scott Kirker, along with Metamore head coach Jared Grebner. Coach, um, took that annual, every I guess every other year, uh, not quite annual, uh, trip over to Washington, um, kind of found out Washington was pretty good. Uh, they were 0-2, oh but you kind of knew going into the game that that was kind of a, a deceptive 0-2 oh record because um, they are pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very similar to what they were oh, two years ago. Two years ago, and then even last year, being one and one, um, you know, they played some very good competition to start the season. It's not indicative of the type of team they are. Uh, when you look at their record on paper and stuff like that, compared to the team they are on the field, uh, so we always knew that we were going to be going up against a uh, tough opponent. Our kids knew they were going up against a tough opponent. Uh, you know, they were ready for the challenge. Uh, you know, we were able to stay with them there for about uh, up until you know middle of the third quarter, late in the third quarter. Um, kind of ran out of gas uh, there at the end. Um, you know, give Washington credit. You know, uh, they came out with the win, uh, but our kids never quit uh, up until that final horn. Uh, yeah, you know, and the thing that I, I thought one of the silver linings, and uh, let's face it, there, there were going to be some, and there definitely were some last Friday night. I thought your offensive line um, at times were overmatched a little bit, but they're a very young and inexperienced group of kids. I thought by the end of the game, they did pretty well. They, they, they had some nice blocks. They did some nice things. Yes, they went against an experienced defense that had, I think, what, seven returning starters, maybe eight returning starters on a team that went to the semifinals last year and gave East St. Louis all they wanted. And those, the bulk of those kids were back. You know, Carter Prina, uh, uh, Noah Bell, they, they, those guys were back this year, and that was a, that's, that's the core of a really nice defense. And our guys still were able to create some, some lanes and some holes for the backs. Yeah. Uh, you can always find silver linings. Uh, you could actually see us grow as the game went on. I'm not going to say everything was perfect uh, from anybody by any means, but you could see strides being made as you watched film, you know, uh, especially on Evans' um, 77, yard touch. 77 yards touchdown run. I mean, I, it was blocked really well. Um, you know, we had the freshman lineman, you know, Evan, he, he got after it um, and, you know, it was positioned himself good against Carter Prina, you know, who was a three-year starter. And, you know, he lost some battles. He won some battles. Um, and that's kind of how the night went. Uh, and so we figured some stuff out about our, ourselves as a team. You know, you mentioned some of those guys up front already with Bell and Prina and those guys. But they had some guys that have gone deep in playoffs. Uh, they've yeah. been three-year starters for them. Uh, they kind of plug and play. They had some uh, new linebackers. Uh, you know, they had Andre Lewis, who is a returner uh, in the secondary. You know, they have A.J. Jones that – you know, transferred back in, uh, who's a good athlete. So they have a core of guys that have a lot of game experience. And, They've been through uh, some wars. They have. You know, some of those guys went to the quarterfinals. They went to the semifinals. Um, and so they, they've been in some really big games uh, before yeah. and, and have been underneath, you know, some bright lights. Uh, for some of us, that was our first time underneath some really bright lights under, you know, a, under a microscope or everything's uh, you know everybody's watching you and the little details just matter whether it's your first step whether it's eye placement whether it's uh, reading the correct keys whether it's getting a, a good read step or whatever it might be um, whether it's pad level um, so there's we could go on and on and on but um, it just goes to show you you know that we can chalk it up to a learning experience um, you know, moving forward for this season uh, to see you know, where we have to improve and uh, how fast we have to make those improvements. Uh, you know, we, we just talked about your offense and their offense struggled at times, had some good things. I thought for the majority of the game, for a good close to three quarters, your defense played outstanding. They went down and scored on their opening drive, took it down, scored. And from that point to almost the fourth quarter, you played even with them defensively. 
um, I thought we did some really nice things. You, you forced some fumbles. You know, unfortunately, the, the way that goofy ball bounces, it never, we never really had a chance to recover any of them. No. Oh, they got kicked out of bounds. Yep. <laughs> you know, and so that first drive, they actually went down. They, were, they had a lot of momentum, and uh, thank goodness they got a false start penalty. And then they had kind of a mix up on a handoff, and they ended up having to punt on fourth down. Um, but they had a great punt. Um, I mean, we started on our own 10 or 8 or something like that. And then they scored on their second drive. Um, we were able to hold the you know, one key thing for us was, you know, after the interception we threw, we were able to hold them to the field goal, and it, it was 10 nothing. Now, uh, were there moments that we bent in the first half where we were giving up some chunks? Yeah, but uh, those kids found ways to make enough plays um, to make it interesting, uh, to say the least. Uh, was everything pretty? No. Sometimes, um, you know, you just got to muddy things up. You know, <laughs> Washington, you know, kind of muddied some things up with their rug run game. You know, just kind of had a little scrum in those first couple series. Um, then they went back to, you know, some you know, belly lead, some midline action. And uh, so they got after it in, you know, their old school eye and just, uh, just kept running the ball at us. I don't even know if they even threw the ball in the second <laughs> half. Uh, one bit. I think they maybe attempted three pass plays. Um, I thought they were one for two. I so it wasn't very much. Uh, I think he got sacked on one uh, late in the first half mm -hmm. when they got the ball back. And so I, they might have called three. You see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah might, you know. Yeah. You know. Now, uh, they called four because Avery defended one shock, tackled him one for a negative two yard loss, and then they had an incomplete over the middle right before that second half. Yeah. So they were like one for three and it was like a, for negative two yards but uh, unfortunately we didn't do enough on first down to put them in long down and distance right. and I thought that was key because uh, Washington was playing ahead of the chains um, which seemed like for a majority of the game and so uh, when they were able to get those first downs and when we did hold them to a punt uh, they were punting from you know the 50 or the 45 you know and so uh, it was very hard for us to flip the field on them, and, and I think that was another key thing. Yeah, you, you never were able to gain any momentum. You got some in the second half. You kicked off, held them three and out, and then they punted, and punted us deep. They got us down to the 23-yard line. Uh, actually, actually, we, we, we received because we deferred in the first half. That's so right. That was the opening series of the first or uh, of the second uh, half. I believe, oh, was it? Yes. Yes, yeah, right, because we kicked off. Mm -hmm. That's right, we received. And then we, um, you know, we get a 77-yard touchdown, right? Mm -hmm. And you had a little momentum. You held them on their first possession, mm -hmm. and they punted, and we got pretty good field position, but we just couldn't get going, couldn't yeah. maintain that. And, and you got to give Washington some credit there for that. But I still think, you know, your, your kids, um, they, they battled. And, and, that, and that's what you want. You know, uh, this is a, this is a very, very young team. Maybe not so much in the years, you know, that some of them are seniors, but in varsity experience. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have some of that. Um, but the thing is, um, at some point, <laughs> I think all of us would uh, – can't keep treating them like they're young or inexperienced right. because uh, the football season's short. It is. Uh, you, you get nine weeks that are guaranteed, and then everything after that's a bonus. Right. And so, you know, we're sitting here and it's week four. And so, at some point, uh, coaches, players, and everything like that, uh, we got to make sure that hey, oh, we don't have time. You know, right, right. Uh, we don't get a lot of time to uh, play around with this lineup up or uh, try this and uh, maybe go through some growing pains because uh, you know, <laughs> that next game's here. Yep. You know, you, basically, you get three work days between Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday's kind of a walkthrough where the hay's in the barn already. Yep. And so, um, you know, it's just a matter of do the, during the season, how fast can we get to where we need to be? Um, and they're doing a good job of working every single day. We have Metamore is always full of coachable kids. Uh, 
that come ready to work every single day uh, and kids that want to get better. And so uh, we're excited where this team's going. Uh, we're excited for what the future holds and we're looking forward to this Friday. You know, you, you, you got beat Friday night. I, I guess the question is, is mentally, are, are, are the kids over the loss to Washington? Yeah. I mean, uh, do losses always sting? For sure. Um, you know, we always say, uh, the harder you work, the harder it is for anybody to give up. Um, and these kids put in a lot of hard work this off season. Um, did we come out on the wrong end of it on Friday night? Yeah. Um, nobody will dispute that. Did it hurt? Yes. But it's you know it's time to move on. Uh, uh, we have Morton this week. If we're sitting there dwelling on it. We're feeling sorry for ourselves. Um, we'll have bigger issues this Friday night. And so you know when we look at film, uh, when we coach the kids up, uh, can we learn from it? Yes. And it's not just the kids. Coaches, they, they learn from it. From every game, uh, coaches can learn from the game. Uh, the players can learn from the game. It's always a learning experience. Uh, you always like to have those learning experiences uh, with a W under your belt, <laughs> but it's not always the case. And so um, although it hurts and it stings, um, if you're any type of competitor, it's always going to be that way. Um, no matter if it was the season opener or whether it's, you know, quarterfinals, semifinals, or whenever it is. Uh, losses hurt because, um, you know, you have put a lot of work in and deservedly so. Uh, but these kids will be ready for Friday night. Um, Homecoming. It, not this Friday. Oh, that, next, that, next. That's, that's the next one. Okay. And so um, we'll just get, you know, our blinders on and get ready for more. Um why don't we take a time out? When we come back, we'll talk about the uh, player of the game. We'll talk about this upcoming game, and then we'll talk about the rest of the Middle Atlantic Conference. Yes. Central Illinois, you asked for it and we listened. Germantown Grill is growing to meet customer demand, adding more dining space and a private gaming area featuring games powered by Gold Rush, the gold standard in video gaming. And Germantown Grill still has all the food and spirits that keep our customers coming back. Stop by to check out our daily specials. The game's on at Germantown Grill, where Central Illinois loves to eat. Open seven days a week, just off Route 116. Welcome back to the Jared Grebner Show, Coach. Uh, first of all, I want to thank, our, yeah, I want to thank um, Jake Atkinson and his wife Sarah for allowing us to film the uh, Jared Grebner Show here at the Grill. Um, always, they've always been very hospitable. Yeah, for us. very gracious, um, very great place to come eat. Um, you know, we're very fortunate to have a place like this. Coach, uh, we talked a little bit before the, the show went on and about your, your player of the game, and I think we kind of decided on uh, Brad Schock. He had, what, 11 tackles. Mm -hmm. uh, had a really good game. Defensively, um, you, there was a couple guys that had some really nice games, but I thought he had probably the best. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of cred credit to go around. Um, you know, teams always play you know as individuals you know first because every individual has to do their assignment and if every individual does their assignment then the team functions as a whole um, Brad has always done his job he's always very aware of what he's supposed to do um, it so happened this week uh, that he was in a position uh, because of his role to make up some plays. Uh, depending on what offenses are doing and whatnot, um, sometimes he might only end up with four tackles, but that's but he's always continues to do his job. Uh, he knows his role on the team, uh, whether it's to set an edge and to turn things back inside so somebody else makes the tackle, even though technically he made the play, mm -hmm. um, or whether it's dropping in coverage or uh, whatever it might be. You know, um, Brad is a very smart football player uh, he's um, very instinctual and he's always done a very good job for us um, we have Morton this week Morton uh, has been a very good team the last few years a very good coach Adam O'Neill very very solid um, foundation there at Morton now and um, they come in at one and two uh, they beat Canton pretty badly last week but uh, they've played two pretty tough teams in uh, Mohammed Seymour 
Baltimore, and then they lost to they also lost to Rochelle, mm -hmm. um, who's always a kind of a salty team that's tough to play against. Yeah. And, and uh, they kind of got behind in that game, and it, it kind of snowballed on them too. Yeah, and the, the thing is, you know, the thing about their two non-con games is boy, they played two ends of the spectrum when you think about it offensively. Um, you know. Muhammad, you know, they'll throw a lot of different wrinkles at you. Whether they go quads one way, quads one way with the motions that they have, empty. Um, all of a sudden, then they'll pack it in, and so they'll throw various looks. And so, and I know that sometimes the score is an indicative of how close the game is. Uh, that game was kind of funny week one because they went down to Muhammad, and they had that delay. You know, we're coming home from Sterling that night, and it's 11:15. 1130 um, and they're still in the third quarter yeah. down in Muhammad playing the weather delay yeah and so you never know how kids handle that stuff and you know kids are probably getting hungry I mean the last time they probably ate was maybe four o'clock if they had a team meal or something before they got on a bus and right. went down there and so all of a sudden you're still playing you know seven hours later <laughs> you know, I mean there's different things that uh, play a big factor into it and so they played a tough opponent there and then they completely went on the other end of the spectrum and you know played Rochelle uh, the wing T team and like you said they're a really good team uh, they'll get after you running the ball and so Morton's they've seen everything offensively it seems like um, and so they're, they've had a lot of really good competition. They've seen a lot of different things, offensively and defensively. And so, um, you know, it's a group that's going to come in hungry. Again, it's a team that you can't look at their record. Uh, one and two means uh, nothing to us. Uh, I'm sure one and two means nothing to them because they know of the type of teams that they, they've played and that kind of competition that got them ready for the Mid Atlantic Conference. You know, but with Metamora, Pekin, Dunlap, Washington still left on their mm -hmm. schedule, they're kind of playing for their playoff lives. Yeah, I mean, everybody's just taking it one game at a time. Um, the thing about the Mid Atlantic is, you know, one, you never know what's going to happen week to week. Um, there's a, many tough teams. I mean, you got East Peoria sitting there at three and zero as well. Um, um, so you never know what can happen on any given Friday. Things change due to, you know, maybe a sprained ankle or something like that, Injuries, or somebody yeah. has to sit out. Um, and so you just never know what's going to happen, even with, you know, just teenage boys in general. You yeah. know, I mean, teenagers, yeah. teenagers you, you just don't know. I mean, did, is something going on, at, you know, uh, at with home, home at home? Um, are they worried about homecoming and stuff like that? There's just so many other factors that come into play that uh, you just never, never know what can happen. Um, we just always do our best uh, to help our kids out both on and off the field and get ready for every single Friday night. Anything else in the middle line I surprise you at all? Uh, the thing is, it's last week it was so early. Um, I don't know what is really a surprise. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, like, you know, I think a lot of people in the area were s surprised by uh, Peak and Dunlap. Um, I don't, I don't know if I was because I haven't seen either of them play. Right. I, mean, I mean, I know uh, what papers have said and stuff like that, but it's pretty hard to make any type of rush to judgment when uh, you're just taking it week by week and you know you have Washington on your plate and the only film that you've watched so far in the conference was Washington up to that point. Uh, no, you've seen scores and stuff like that, but you know I haven't seen any Dunlap film. I haven't seen any any Pekin film. Uh, I've seen two teams in our conference and that's Washington and that's uh, Morton now that we're playing them uh, because us coaches we got to have the blinders on as well uh, because, like you said, there, there is a lot of tough competition and um, worry, we'll worry about those teams when we get to them. Um, it is always kind of fun just to you know, do a little comparative scoring, but sometimes matchups are just different. Some matchups favor another team compared to another. And so um, every Friday night brings um, new challenges, brings different challenges. And so um, we just look forward to the one uh, Friday that we get this week and live in the moment. 
Hard to believe it's week four already. Yeah. I mean, you're sitting there thinking, man, you know, you're more than a quarter of the way, or you're almost more half. than a third, you know, a third of the way yeah. through our season right now. And so it just goes to show you how fast the season goes and uh, how we should just really, you know, kind of live in the moment with our teammates, and, you know, uh, because you're just not going to get this type of camarader camaraderie every single week. Coach, um, you know, you're sitting at, at two and one in the conference, and um, you know it's it's still a pretty a pretty promising future for you. You know that uh, you got some tough teams ahead of you, but um, you know I, I think you're pretty confident mm -hmm. um, as you should be. Yeah. And uh, you know you, you've had a few dings. Fourth week of the season, everybody's got dings. Mm -hmm. um, so you're probably not any different than everybody else, but. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's fun. Yeah. You got to enjoy it. You got to have some fun, and and these kids are going to give us a lot more enjoyment. I know last Friday was a, a downer, yeah. but you, you still got you know six weeks left, counting mm -hmm. this Friday. And, um, it's going to be fun. Yeah, you know, and uh, football is a great game. Competitive sports in general, they're they're great. Um, you don't get that much time with your teammates. Um, you know, us coaches, we don't get to spend that much time with them. Um, and so we just have to keep taking it one day at a time. I know practices sometimes can be long, but you work hard in practice so those Friday nights are easy, so that you can enjoy those Friday nights even that much more. Um, and so uh, we're looking forward to this Friday, uh, you know, try and right the wrong from last week, um, and then, you know, get back on the winning track. Uh, we're sitting, you know, at two and one. There's still a lot of football to be played, and we look forward to uh, playing all those games. Coach, we'll let you get going here. Well, thank bring you very much. W, and uh, we'll see you Friday night at Malone.